Hello and welcome. Today we're going to, this video is going to go over uh, valence electrons. Valence electrons are the electrons that are in the highest energy level of an atom. So you know, uh, just a little review, that atoms have energy levels in it and that the electrons fill up the energy levels from the lowest energy level to the highest. So we have found out in our studies that electrons in the highest energy level tend to give atoms their properties. So uh, that's why what we're going to do at this point is just learn how to count the number of electrons that we call valence electrons that are in the highest energy level. So um, the way that you figure it out, how many electrons are in the highest energy level, or valence electrons, is by looking at either the configuration of that element, or we can look at the periodic table. Now any element that is in the same family our same column, they're going to have the same number of valence electrons. So once we figure out one in that column, we know all of them they have the same answer. Finally, the maximum number is eight because the highest energy level of any atom is always the S and the P electrons. Remember how the D and the F orbitals are a level or two levels below what the S and the P's are. So that means we can only have two in the S, two electrons in the S orbital, and two electrons in the P or, or six electrons in the P orbital, and that would be a grand total of eight electrons altogether. Let's look at some examples and see how to do this. So our first example here is for carbon. I said one way that we can do this is if we take a look at what the electron configuration is. So looking at the electron configuration, I'm going to look for the highest energy level. You can see carbon has electrons in the first energy level, and the second energy level with the S's, and the second energy level with the P's. So the highest energy level that carbon has electrons in is the second energy level. If I want to know how many electrons are in the second energy level, I can just look at these numbers right here. Adding those together, I have two in the S's. I have two in the P's, a grand total of four valence electrons. I also said we can do this with the periodic table. So let me drag my periodic table out here that we use. And we'll find carbon. Here it is right here. And using the periodic table, there is a little cheater way for me to do this. And that is by kind of looking at the top column numbers. So you can see some top column numbers. Here's column number one, column number two. Now you see down here, three through 12. Recall from another time that these electrons here are part of the d orbitals and they're one level below, so they're not part of our valence level. So we don't count those in the valences. So we start, resume our counting over here then. So there's three. See, it says 13, but I'm thinking of it as three. Four, there's our row with carbon, 
And you see it has four valence electrons, and that's what we predicted. Five, six, seven, and eight. So that's the number of valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, carbon had four. All of these have four. Silicon has four. Germanium has four. Tin has four. Lead has four. All of them that are in the same family or the same column all have the same number of valence electrons. Hey, let's put this away. And try one more. How about calcium? So looking at calcium, here I have it in my noble gas configuration. And I want to be able to tell how many valence electrons. So I'm looking for my highest energy levels. In the noble gas configuration, it is always going to have the highest energy level because everything below that fourth energy level is part of that argon right there. So the fourth energy level is our highest energy level. Calcium only has electrons in the S of the fourth energy level. So if I want to know how many valence electrons it has in that fourth energy level, I can just look right there. There's the number of electrons, and it would be two. Again, checking out our periodic table, here's calcium. It's in that second row. See there in the second column? This is part of that S block right here. And there's calcium. It has two electrons, two valence electrons. That's how I can use the periodic table to tell how many. And I'm going to give you a moment maybe to take a look at chlorine here and see how you do with chlorine. Do you have it? Did you figure out the right number? Did you say that it was seven valence electrons? I hope so, because that would be the right answer. Looking at it, the third energy level is our highest energy level. And here I have two, and there I have five more. Grand total of seven. All right, I'm going to add one more little thing to this. There's another way that we show valence electrons and that is through the use of what we call a Lewis dot diagram. In a Lewis dot diagram we show the valence electrons as dots. So let me show you how this looks. So for carbon, we said it has four valence electrons. So a Lewis dot diagram would use the symbol of carbon. And then we would put four dots around the carbon atom in order to make it so that it has the four valence electrons. So here's how I'm going to put it around there. I'm going to put one, two, three, four dots. Those four dots are representing the four valence electrons that carbon has. 
Now I spread them out all over the place on this carbon atom. That's because they repel each other and electrons tend to get away from each other as far as possible. Let's try the calcium one. We said calcium has two valence electrons. So again, I'm going to use the symbol for calcium and then I've got to put two dots on it to represent the two dots, the two electrons. One, two. Now you can put them really any place you want because we're representing an atom and of course electrons are all over the place in the atom. But we do kind of have a system for how we lay the dots out. The dots get placed along an imaginary box. So if you think about a box that is drawn around, say, this carbon atom, here's my little imaginary box, then notice I've put each of the dots along the edge of the box. Same with the calcium atom. I would put them along the edge of the box. Now we don't draw in the box. It's just kind of an imaginary thing. So let's keep that in mind for our last one that I'm going to do, which is chlorine. Again, use the symbol. And we said that chlorine has seven electrons that we have to draw. And again, I'm going to make this little box around it. And I'm going to do something else symbolic. I am going to pair up electrons, just like they were in an orbital. Watch this. See how I've paired two of them up here, and two of them there, and two of them there, just like they were in an orbital together. That's why we draw them in pairs. It's symbolic. And then we have one that's left over that's not. And if you see, I've drawn them sort of along the edges of my little imaginary box here that I have around the chlorine symbol. All right, so we reviewed, just to review, I mean, we figured out how to use the electron configurations and the periodic table to determine the number of valence electrons, electrons that are in the highest energy level. And we said an easier way of showing these valence electrons is in what we call a Lewis dot diagram, where we can put a dots around the symbol of the element to represent the number of electrons. Later, we're going to see that these are the electrons that are involved in bonding. And so we're going to continue working with these Lewis dot diagrams and valence electrons in future lessons. Hope that helps, and uh, we'll catch you next time.